Today we're gonna to try Michter's 10 year old single barrel bourbon. Now can this live up to the hype of the 2023 release? Let's see and find out. Welcome back to the Bourbon Retriever, where I go in the wild, hunt bourbon, and bring it back for you. And today we have a special pour. It is Michter's 10-year-old single barrel bourbon, the 2024 release. And what's really cool about this bottle is it is a batch A. Last year, the 2023 A's were really hyped up. A couple people on YouTube and other places had reviewed them, said amazing things. Fortunate for myself, I was able to get the 23A in one of the Virginia drops. And this year, similarly, I was lucky enough to get the 24A. I was able to get the 24 batch A from Esquire Liquors over in Oxon Hill, Maryland. If you haven't been there, 100% go check them out. They have some of the best prices in the DMV. In addition, we have a collaboration pick coming out. It is an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. You are not gonna wanna miss it. It is probably one of the best aromas that I have gotten from a barrel pick and I cannot wait for it to come out. Okay, a little bit of backstory on Michter's tin. Michter's is a non-distiller producer. So these are actually not produced by Michter's. They are produced from someone else, but they use Michter's mash bill, yeast strain, um, entry level proof, uh, things along that front. Michter's is starting to produce their own stuff. Um, however, it has not come out yet, but it should be out in the near future, especially for their baseline products. But for things like the 10, the 20, 25 year, um, it's gonna be uh, a while before uh, you see any other juice in that stuff. One of the notable things about the Mictorsen is the proof point. It is 94.4, which is extremely low for uh, bourbon enthusiasts and for that price tag. Um, typically, I would shy away from bourbons at that proof, but traditionally Mictor's tins have been some of the most flavor at that proof point. So I'm excited to jump in this and see if this year's matches it. These come in at $185 MSRP. If you see them, oftentimes they're gonna be marked up above that. These can be hard to find, and it is coming in at above that $10 per year age statement. However, I did go on a Mictress tour last year. It was a legacy tour, which I highly recommend everyone go out and try and do. The issue is they only offer it like once a month and it is $100, but you get to try some of Mictor's best products, including the Mictor's 20, which is absolutely phenomenal. But on that tour, we talked about the Mictor's 10 a little bit and the tour guy confirmed that last year's batch, uh, Mictor's 10s were well over the 10 year age statement. Most of those were in the 12 to 14. And he also mentioned that all future releases will be also well above the 10 year. So, um, he said these are probably gonna be in that 12 to 14 range also. However, on the tour, the tour guy wasn't able to confirm any differences uh, with the batch lettering on here. If you look at a Mictor's 10, how to read it, on the top it has the first two letters, which will describe the year, and then next to it will be a letter. The letter describes the month that it was batched. So A would be January, B, February, and so on and so on. I asked some questions trying to figure out if there's any differences between the batches, like in a different warehouse, um, different ages, anything like that. The tour guide didn't have any information on it, so it's hard to confirm whether there is any variable proof to the hype around the A batches. Maybe they are from a certain part of the warehouse that just makes better uh, juice. Maybe they are the older barrels. Maybe they taste through them and the best ones go out first. It's really hard to know. If I had to guess, I don't think there really is any secret to the different batches, but I have personally only been able to try the A batches, so I haven't been able to do a blind with all of them. I would love to actually sit down with all the batches or as many batches as I can get and blind them and see if the A batch would actually come in first. But with all that background out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the pour. Cheers. Okay, right off the bat, I'm getting a lot of the notes that I remember from the 23 batch A. Get a lot of that musty oak. And there is a reason I waited to do a review in this bottle. When I first cracked the 23A, it was just very fruity and light and also just extremely muted. Um, and I had the same reaction when I popped the 24A. All the notes were there from the 23, it's just everything was just muted. So I waited a bit, popped this, got some pours out of it, and I'm telling you right now, it has opened up a ton. Yeah, it's a nice mixture of a dried plum or just some other really dark fruit mixed in with a nice musty oak. Uh, maybe like a library book, something like that. 
Uh, it is just the perfect mixture for me. This really is a bourbon that I could sit and just smell for a long time. Uh, I am really digging this pour. I just can't get over how rich the aroma is, especially for something that is 94 proof. Typically you don't get this much flavor from a low proof whiskey. I really feel like I'm just smelling a really old leather bound book. It is just absolutely beautiful. And this is not a glass that you need to go searching for the notes. It is in your face, pungent. And I am a big fan of these notes and I am just digging how rich and bold they are. But with that, let's go on to the palette. Okay, the most prominent note on the palette to me is almost a caramel covered raisin. Um, the oak to me doesn't really transition to the palate as much as it is on the aroma. The aroma, it is 100% there. On the palate, you can tell a little bit on the back end of it, but it's just not in your face type of oak. Like the Knob Creek 12, that is an in your face oak, uh, where this is a little more subtle and the sweetness just is a little more forward. Yeah, and then right after you get that punch of oak on the back end, it just dies off, which you expect. It's a 94 proof whiskey. These shouldn't have very long finishes. Um, it'd be interesting to try this with other 90, 100 proof whiskeys to see how it holds up finish wise relative to that bracket. You really, to me, I'm starting to think I need to start comparing finishes to their bracket. It's, it really is almost a disservice to 9 proof whiskey to say, oh, they all have not long finishes. Well, it makes sense, right? If you compare it to like 120 proof whiskey, hazmat, it's just not going to have the same type of finish. So I almost need to start comparing this to other low proof whiskeys and see how is the finish relative in that bracket. Okay, the more and more I'm drinking this, that oak note is becoming more pronounced. And it is after that nice sweetness, that raisin caramel note I mentioned, it turns into this kind of oak bomb now to me as I drink it more on that mid to late palate right before the finish cuts off. There is a nice prominent oak, but I still say it's nothing like other 10 year old age products uh, oak wise, but I still wouldn't call it over oaked by any means. Okay, before I give a final grade on this bottle, let me go and jump in the 23 just to see how it tastes um, side by side. You know, I have a memory of this bottle, but you only really know how it compares by actually drinking it. Plus, I'll take any excuse to drink this as much as I can. Cheers. Okay, off the nose, I would say the 24 is more fruit forward, whereas Batch 23 is more oak, musty oak forward. However, it is a lot of the same notes. Um, you can definitely tell these are from the same distillery. And I bet you that musty oak note is solely because this bottle is drained a little more. And I bet you when 24 gets drained a little bit, it will probably almost be indistinguishable between the two. Wow, that is interesting. Now that I'm tasting them side by side, batch three almost gives me kind of almost honey crisp s notes. Um, the pour is drastically changing comparing the two. And I wonder if it's just because the notes in the 23 are just so much more prominent. That raisin note I was mentioning on the 24, it is there in the 23, 10 times fold. Uh, imagine maybe that raisin wasn't quite dried out yet. It is almost still a grape and just has a ton of juice still left in it. Um, that note is just so much more pronounced and it is fuller. Yeah, I'd say the finish on the two are about the same, which you would expect, um, but overall, it is, to me, splitting hairs between these two bottles. I had very similar experiences when I cracked both of them, um, and I bet you as this one gets down further, it will be almost the same experience. And if you weren't able to get a 23A, so you can get a 24A, um, I think over time it will become closer to the same experience. It's just hard because these weren't both fresh cracks, but the notes are very similar, just the 24 is a little more muted because it hasn't had time to open up yet. I just can't get over how drastic 24 now smells compared to the 23 when you put them side by side. Like I didn't get any of those honey notes in there originally. Um, and bourbons will do this in blinds and when you put them side by side, they'll make certain notes more pronounced. Um, they can actually make some notes hide. Um, it is wild how a bourbon will change in a blind and it will change based on what else is in the blind. Um, so that's why I highly recommend you do blinds 
and also change the order that you do the blind in. Okay, before I get into my final grade on the Mictors 23A, if you're enjoying this content, hit that subscribe button. That way you don't miss any content going forward. In addition, I'm starting a couple other platforms. Uh, I have a Discord channel I'm starting to grow, trying to make a nice, knit, well-rounded community over there. Loving, welcoming. Go over there and check it out. In addition, I have a Patreon. Um, I'm releasing some other content over there. Um, I do a monthly giveaway. In addition, I'm doing a blind live tasting with some of my Patreons. If that is stuff that you're interested, go check it out. Okay, is the Mictures 23A, is it a buy, pass, bar, pour, maybe something else? I would say the Mictures 23A is a buy and then also a backup buy. I would buy as many of these bottles as I can. I love this bottle. I love how it's low proof so I can drink through a couple of them without feeling guilty. There is a price tag at $180. That is a lot of money, but I just really dig that oak leather notebook smell, um, mustiness with a little bit of raisin and grapefruit in there. I just, that is right up my wheelhouse, especially for you out there who haven't had dusty pours. Um, this is very reminiscent of those pours and fits a very unique spot on a person's shelf. There aren't many whiskeys with about a 95 proof whiskey that has as much flavor as these have. Last year, the 23A came in third place from you and I expect a similar result for the 24A. So that's my review of the Mictors 23A. But if you're enjoying this content, before you head out, check out this video or this one. Until next time, cheers.